Hi everyone this is Ruchi Kulkarni and today we are going to do the chapter the necklace written by Guy de Maupassant and this chapter is in your book Footprints without feet of class 10th The story revolves around a selfish lady named Matilda she was dissatisfied with her life because she didn't have the riches and luxuries which she always dreamt of she suffered due to her poverty not just that She was also greedy and jealous of her rich friend. On the other hand, her husband, who was a humble clerk, was content with life. One day in a grand party, Matilda lost a diamond necklace which she had borrowed from her rich friend. But its replacement cost them a lifetime of hardship. And in the end, the reality about the necklace taught Matilda a great lesson in the hard way. Let's read and understand this interesting story written by Guy de Maupassant after which we will discuss the significance of the title moral of the story summary and question answers Now without much ado let's begin by knowing something about its author Guy de Maupassant was born on 5th August 1850 in France He was a 19th century French novelist, short story writer and poet, remembered as a master of the short story form and as a representative of the naturalist school of writers who depicted human lives and destinies and social forces in disillusioned and often pessimistic terms. He wrote some 300 short stories, 6 novels, three travel books and one volume of verse several of mopusson's short stories including lopok and the necklace were adapted as episodes of the 1986 indian anthology television series katha sagar he died on 6 july 1893 at the age of 42 Matilda is invited to a grand party. She has a beautiful dress but no jewelry. She borrows a necklace from a friend and loses it. What happens then? Let's read the story titled The Necklace. She was one of those pretty young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks. Error of destiny means a mistake of destiny. She had no dowry. no hopes no means of becoming known loved and married by a man either rich or distinguished here distinguished means popular or famous and she allowed herself to marry a petty clerk in the office of the board of education petty means unimportant she was simple but she was unhappy she suffered incessantly incessantly means continuously feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries delicacies means good food she suffered from the poverty of her apartment the shabby walls and the worn chairs worn means old all these things tortured and angered her when she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband who uncovered the tureen with a delighted air tureen is a deep covered dish saying oh the good pot pie i know nothing better than that she would think of elegant dinners of shining silver she thought of the exquisite food served in marvelous dishes she had neither frocks nor jewels nothing and she loved only those things the writer begins the story with the description of matilda He is introducing her as a pretty young lady but she was born as a mistake of destiny into a family of clerks she had no hopes of becoming known or reputed or loved or married by a rich person so she married a simple clerk who worked in the office of board of education she was a very simple lady but she was very unhappy because she continuously suffered She wanted to be rich. She wanted to have good food and the luxuries. But on the other hand, she was so poor that her apartment had very shabby and dull walls 
and the furniture in her house was also old and all these things really tortured and angered her because she did not get the kind of life she had expected in the evening when it was dinner time and her husband opened the dish and he smelled the pot pie which he really loved at the same time matilda was thinking about elegant dinners which were served in silver bowls or silver utensils she thought about the marvelous food that was being served to her by servants but she was so poor that she neither had good clothes to wear nor jewelry she had nothing she loved all those things which she did not have in this part of the story we come to understand that matilda was a person who wanted to be rich she wanted luxuries in life she wanted good clothes jewelry lot of money servants serving her but on the other hand her husband was a very simple man he had a simple job and he was very satisfied with whatever he had in life she had a rich friend a schoolmate at the convent who she did not like to visit she suffered so much when she returned she wept for whole days from despair and disappointment one evening her husband returned elated bearing in his hand a large envelope elated means happy here he said here is something for you she quickly drew out a printed card on which was inscribed these words inscribed means written the minister of instruction and madam george hompnu hompnu is a french word which is pronounced in this way ask the honor of m here m means monsieur which is a french word which is the same as mr and the abbreviation mme is madame in french and it is the same as madam so monsieur and madame loisel company monday evening january 18 at the minister's residence instead of being delighted as her husband had hoped she threw the invitation spitefully upon the table murmuring what do you suppose i want with that spitefully means angrily matilda had a friend who was rich she was her schoolmate but matilda never liked to visit her school friend's place whenever she visited her friend she suffered with so much of disappointment and despair one evening matilda's husband returned home happily he had an envelope in his hand and inside the envelope was an invitation it was an invitation for a party at the minister's residence and both matilda and her husband were invited there matilda's husband had expected that she would be very happy to receive it but unfortunately she wasn't she threw the invitation angrily upon the table and murmured what was she supposed to do with that but my dearie i thought it would make you happy you never go out and this is an occasion and a fine one everybody wishes one and it is very select not many are given to employees you will see the whole official world there she looked at him with an irritated eye and declared impatiently what do you suppose i have to wear to such a thing as that he had not thought of that he stammered why the dress you wear when we go to the theater it seems very pretty to me he was silent stupefied in dismay at the sight of his wife weeping stupefied means shocked he stammered what is the matter what is the matter now matilda's husband could understand that she was not happy to receive the invitation she started to cry so he tried to convince her that it was one of the finest occasions that they could have an invitation to because not very many people were invited there only selected employees were invited and she would be so happy to see the whole official world there as it is she never went outside to socialize with her friends but matilda was of a different opinion she looked irritatingly at her husband and then she asked him what was she supposed to wear in such a big party 
Matilda's husband did not know how to reply to that, but he still answered that she could wear a dress that she always wore at the theatre because that dress seemed very pretty to him. But then he was silent. He was shocked at Matilda's behaviour and reaction to that. And then when he saw that she started to cry, he asked her what the matter was. By violent effort, she had controlled her vexation and responded in a calm voice. Vexation means irritation. Wiping her moist cheeks. Nothing. Only I have no dress and consequently I cannot go to this affair. Give your card to some colleague whose wife is better fitted out than I. He was grieved. Grieved means sad. But answered. Let us see, Matilda, how much would a suitable costume cost? Something that would serve for other occasion? Something very simple? She reflected for some seconds, thinking of a sum that she could ask for without bringing with it an immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk. Finally, she said in a hesitating voice, I cannot tell exactly but it seems to me that 400 francs ought to cover. He turned a little pale, for he had saved just this sum to buy a gun that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer with some friends who went to shoot larks on Sunday. Larks are seabirds. Nevertheless, he answered, Very well, I will give you 400 francs but try to have a pretty dress. Francs is the currency of France. When Matilda's husband asked her what the matter was, that she was crying so violently, she controlled herself and she responded to him that she did not have a good dress to wear at a big party like that. So he can give that invitation to some other colleague whose wife is better than her. On getting this kind of a reaction, Matilda's husband was very sad and then he asked Matilda how much a nice simple dress would cost that would suit that occasion. She then thought about a sum that she did not want him to refuse or become frightened on hearing that sum since he was a very simple and a poor man. So finally she told him that a dress which would suit that kind of an occasion would cost somewhere around 400 francs. On hearing this, Matilda's husband became pale. He got nervous. He had saved just the same amount of money to buy a gun so that he would be able to join his friends in hunting parties. But he was so kind-hearted that he gave up that saved money and instead of buying a gun for himself, he gave the same amount of money to Matilda so that she could buy a nice dress for her. The day of the ball approached and Madame Loisel seemed sad, disturbed, anxious. Nevertheless, her dress was nearly ready. Her husband said to her one evening, What is the matter with you? You have acted strangely for two or three days. And she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty-stricken look. I would prefer not to go to this party. Vexed means irritated, adorn means decorated and poverty stricken look means someone who looks poor. He replied, you can wear some natural flowers, in the season they look very chic. Chic is a French word which means stylish or elegant. She was not convinced. No, she replied. There is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women. Then her husband cried out, How stupid we are! Go and find your friend Madame Forestier and ask her to lend you her jewels. Well, the day of the party approached. Matilda was almost ready with her dress, but there was something more which bothered her. When her husband asked her what the matter was, she responded that she had no jewellery to wear with that dress. Without jewellery, she would look like a poor woman, so she did not want to go to that party. 
Her husband suggested her to wear some natural flowers because they would look very stylish or elegant with the dress. But to that Matilda did not agree. She thought that there'll be nothing more humiliating than have a shabby air in the midst of rich women. In other words, she wanted to say that it'll be so embarrassing for her to be one of those rich women who will be dressed so properly while on the other hand she would look so poor. So then her husband suggested her to go to her friend Madame Fogastia. She may be able to help her or lend her some jewels. She uttered a cry of joy. It is true, she said. I had not thought of that. The next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress. Madame Fogastia went to her closet, took out a large jewel case, brought it, opened it and said, "Choose, my dear." She saw at first some bracelets, then a collar of pearls, then a Venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship. She tried the jewels before the glass, hesitated, but could neither decide to take them nor leave them. Then she asked, "Have you nothing more?" "Why, yes. Look for yourself. I do not know what will please you." Suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds. Her hands trembled as she took it out. She placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic. Ecstatic means happy. Then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety, "Could you lend me this? Only this?" "Why, yes, certainly." Matilda was so happy upon hearing her husband's suggestion. So the next day she went to her friend's house who was rich and she told her about the party that she was going to attend and her distress that she had no jewelry to wear on that dress. Her friend went to her closet and she brought a jewel case. In that there were many pieces of jewelry. Matilda at first looked at some bracelets or a necklace of pearls then there was also a venetian cross which was made of gold and jewels which was very intricately designed she tried all these jewelry pieces before the mirror but she could not decide whether they were going with the dress or not neither did she want to take them nor she wanted to leave them she was not happy with whatever she tried so she asked whether there was anything else and suddenly matilda discovered a black satin box when she opened that box there was a necklace of diamonds in it she took out that necklace and she tried it against her dress when she saw that the necklace looked so good on her dress she was ecstatic she was happy and then she asked her friend to lend her that necklace her friend agreed to it She fell upon the neck of her friend, embraced her with passion, then went away with her treasure. The day of the ball arrived. Madame Loisel was a great success. She was the prettiest of all, elegant, gracious, smiling and full of joy. All the men noticed her, asked her name and wanted to be presented. She danced with enthusiasm, intoxicated with pleasure, thinking of nothing. but all this admiration this victory so complete and sweet to her heart she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the little salons since midnight salon is a reception room with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps that they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs when matilda's friend gave her the necklace matilda was very happy she hugged her and then went back to her home the day of the party arrived matilda dressed up very nicely she looked the prettiest of all the ladies there she looked elegant she looked gracious 
she smiled she was full of joy all the men there noticed her and introduced themselves and also asked her name she danced there very enthusiastically joyfully she was completely full of pleasure she got nothing but only admiration that day she felt that she was victorious and all those moments were very close and sweet to her heart and soon it was 4 o'clock in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the reception rooms with three more men whose wives were also enjoying themselves when it was time for them to go metilda's husband threw a kind of wrap or a shawl kind of a thing to wrap her body because it was cold outside the wrap which metilda used over the dress was poor there was a clash between the rich dress and the poor wrap metilda did not want other women to see her poor wrap because all of them were wrapped in rich furs while hers was an old and poor one loisel detained her detained her means kept her waiting wait said he i am going to call a cab but she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly when they were in the street they found no carriage and they began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance hailing means calling they walked along toward the river hopeless and shivering finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall it took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment wearily means tired it was all over for her and on his part he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory suddenly she uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck now it was time for them to leave the party metilda's husband stopped her because he wanted to call a cab but metilda did not want to stop there because she did not want other rich ladies to notice her cheap wrap so she did not listen to him and she descended the steps rapidly or she went downstairs speedily then she was in the street but they found no carriage they then began to search for a carriage calling for all the coachmen whoever they saw at distance they had to walk a lot so they walked along toward the river they were hopeless and they were shivering in cold finally one of those old carriages which one can see in paris after nightfall came along that carriage took them as far as their door of the house metilda and her husband went to their apartment that day was all over for metilda's husband he only remembered that he has to join the office by 10 o'clock in the morning he was very very tired but metilda wanted to have another look at herself in the mirror she wanted to see her glory once again so she removed the wrap from her shoulder and stood in front of the mirror and just then she cried because the necklace around her neck was missing now let's see what happens next lozel already half undressed asked what is the matter she turned towards him excitedly i have i have i no longer have madam fokhastir's necklace he arose in dismay what how's that it is not possible and they looked in the folds of the dress in the folds of the cloak in the pockets everywhere they could not find it he asked you are sure you still had it when we left the minister's house yes i felt it as we came out but if you had lost it in the street we should have heard it fall it must be in the cab yes it is possible did you take the number no and you did you notice what it was no when metilda told her husband that the necklace was missing her husband was also shocked they looked for the necklace in the folds of her dress in the folds of the coat that she was wearing in pockets everywhere but they did not find the necklace and then he asked her if 
she was sure that the necklace was there when they left minister's house to which matilda said that yes she did feel the necklace around her neck then they tried to guess whether they had lost it in the street or it must have fallen down in the cab but none of them had cab's number and none of them noticed anything special about the cab they looked at each other utterly cast down cast down means worried or sad finally loiso dressed himself up i am going he said over the track where we went on foot to see if i can find it on foot means walking and he went she remained in her evening gown not having the force to go to bed towards 7 o'clock her husband returned he had found nothing he went to the police and to the cab offices and put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward she waited all day in a state of bewilderment before this frightful disaster bewilderment means confusion loisel returned in the evening his face pale he had discovered nothing both matilda and her husband were now worried and sad because they had lost the necklace which matilda had taken from her friend and it was a precious and costly diamond necklace matilda's husband got dressed and he told her that he would go over the track once again where they walked so he went away matilda did not change her evening gown because she was very worried and she did not want to go to bed around 7 o'clock in the morning matilda's husband returned but he had found nothing when in the meantime he had went to the police he had gone to taxi offices he had put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward to whoever finds that necklace matilda waited all day to get some kind of response but she did not get loisel returned in the evening his face had become pale because he had not discovered anything both of them were utterly worried he said write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace clasp means hook and that you will have it repaired that will give us some time she wrote as he dictated at the end of a week they had lost all hope and loisel older by 5 years declared we must replace this jewel in a shop of the palais royal they found a chaplet of diamonds chaplet is a string which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost it was valued at 40000 francs they could get it for 36000 loisel possessed 18000 francs which his father had left him he borrowed the rest he made ruinous promises ruinous means disastrous took money from usurers usurers are money lenders and the whole race of lenders then he went to get the new necklace depositing on the merchant's counter 36000 francs when madame loisel took back the jewels to madame forcastier the latter said to her in a frigid tone frigid means cold or bitter you should have returned them to me sooner for i might have needed them matilda's husband suggested her to write a letter to her friend telling her that the clasp or the hook of the necklace is broken and that she requires some time to get it repaired she wrote to her friend the same by the end of the week they did not find any clue about the necklace and they lost all hope loisel now looked older by 5 years because he had been so worried that the worry and stress could easily be seen on his face and then he thought that they had to replace that jewel or that necklace so they went to a shop where they found a chaplet or a string of diamonds which looked exactly the same as the necklace of madame forcastier but it was valued at 40000 francs by bargaining they got down the price to 36000 but loisel did not have that kind of money he only had 18000 francs which his father had left for him but rest of the 18000 he had to borrow from money lenders to with them he made ruinous promises 
After getting the entire thirty-six thousand francs, they went to the shop and they bought the necklace. When Matilda took that necklace to her friend, her friend asked her in a very bitter and a cold tone that why hadn't she returned the necklace sooner? Because she had needed it. Madame Focaccia did not open the jewelry box as Madame Loisel feared she would. What would she think if she should perceive the substitution? What should she say? Would she take her for a robber? Perceive means understand, and substitution means replacement. Madame Loisel now knew the horrible life of necessity. She did her part, however, completely heroically. Heroically means bravely. It was necessary to pay this frightful debt. she would pay it they sent away the maid they changed their lodgings they rented some rooms in an attic she learned the odious work of a kitchen odious means unpleasant she washed the dishes she washed the solid linen their clothes the dish cloths which she hung on the line to dry she took down the refuse to the street each morning and brought up the water stopping at each landing to catch her breath She clothed like a woman of the people. She went to the grocers, the butchers, and the fruiterers with her basket on her arm, shopping, haggling to the last sou of her miserable money. Haggling means bargaining, and sou is a French coin of low value. When Matilda returned the necklace to her friend, thankfully her friend did not open the jewel box. Had she done that, she would have noticed that it was a replacement. So Matilda was very scared, and she thought that if her friend had noticed that it was a replacement, she might be taken as a robber. But thankfully, nothing of that sort happened. Matilda now had a very horrible life. She had to deal with it, and she had to make some adjustments and compromise. She did her part, and she lived bravely. because they had to pay that debt and they had to do all the hard work to pay that debt they had sent away the maid they changed their apartment they rented some rooms in an attic she started doing all the household work herself she sent the maid away so she had to do the kitchen work she had to clean the dishes wash the clothes hang the clothes outside to dry to take down the garbage to the street every morning and bring up buckets of water all by herself she clothed like any poor woman she herself went to the grocer the butcher and to the fruiterers to buy vegetables and fruits she used to carry the shopping basket on her arm and she used to bargain for even the last sou of the money that she had so in all she had to make so many adjustments that she had to change her lifestyle in order to save money so that they both could pay the debt the husband worked evenings putting the books of some merchants in order and nights he often did copying at 5 sous a page and this life lasted for 10 years at the end of 10 years they had restored all madame loisel seemed old now She had become a strong, hard woman, the crude woman of the poor household. Her hair badly dressed, her skirts awry, her hands red. She spoke in a loud tone and washed the floors with the large pails of water. Awry means awkward. But sometimes, when her husband was at the office, she would seat herself before the window and think of that evening party of former times. of that ball where she was so beautiful and so flattered how would it have been if she had not lost the necklace who knows how singular is life and how full of changes how small a thing will ruin or save one if on one hand matilda had to compromise on the lifestyle on the other hand her husband had to work day and night he picked up extra jobs he now worked in the evenings to put books of some merchants in order at night he did the job of copying at 5 sous a page and this entire hardship for both of them lasted for 10 years it took them 10 years to pay the debt 
but by the end of 10 years they both seemed very old matilda had grown into a strong hard woman she became very rude and complaining her hair was always badly dressed her skirts were dirty her hands had become red because of the work that she used to do she spoke in a very loud tone she washed the floors with large buckets of water but sometimes when her husband was at the office she would often sit by the window and think about the evening when she looked so beautiful about that same party evening when she impressed so many people and got so many compliments and then she thinks how life would have been if she had not lost the necklace but who knows life is always full of changes even a small thing in life can either ruin it completely or save these were the thoughts which matilda had whenever she was alone one sunday as she was taking a walk in the champs elysees to rid herself of the cares of the week she suddenly perceived a woman walking with a child champs elysees is the name of a place in paris it was madame facastia still young still pretty still attractive madame loisel was affected should she speak to her yes certainly and now that she had paid she would tell her all why not she approached her good morning jean her friend did not recognize her and was astonished to be so familiarly addressed by this common personage astonished means surprised personage means person she stammered but madam i do not know you must be mistaken no i am matilda loisel her friend uttered a cry of astonishment oh my poor matilda how you have changed one sunday matilda thought of taking a walk in a place called champs elysees in paris she wanted to get rid of all the worries of the week and suddenly she saw a woman walking with a child that woman was her friend from whom she had taken the diamond necklace but her friend still looked very pretty and attractive matilda was affected she thought whether she should speak to her or not whether she should tell the story about the necklace or not but then she decided that she would so she approached her friend madam facastia whose first name was jean when she called her out madam facastia or her friend did not recognize her after that matilda introduced her and then her friend's instant reaction was that how did matilda change so much she was unrecognizable now let's see what happens next yes i have had some hard days since i saw you and some miserable ones and all because of you because of me how's that you recall the diamond necklace that you loaned me to wear to the minister's ball loaned means lend yes very well well i lost it how's that since you returned it to me i returned another to you exactly like it and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it you can understand that it was not easy for us who have nothing but it is finished and i'm decently content content means satisfied madam facastia stopped short she said you say that you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine yes you did not perceive it then they were just alike and she smiled with proud and simple joy madam facastia was touched and took both her hands and she replied Oh my poor Matilda mine was false they were not worth over 500 francs then Matilda started to tell her story how the days were so hard ever since she saw her last because she was all the time trying to pay for the diamond necklace but her friend did not understand that how she lost it because she had returned the diamond necklace to her at the same time Matilda replied her that she returned another diamond necklace which was exactly like her and now that everything is gone and everything has been paid off 
she is now very much satisfied at the end matilda was very happy she felt proud and joyful that her friend had not even come to know that it was being replaced but matilda's friend had something very surprising to share and she said that her diamond necklace was a false one that is it was an artificial necklace it was not even worth over 500 francs but to replace that matilda had brought a 36000 francs worth a diamond necklace which actually had ruined the life of mr and madam loisel so we can say that the diamond necklace had taught a lesson to matilda in a hard way she must have definitely realized her mistake of being greedy and selfish the title the necklace is suggestive of the most important object around which the whole story revolves it was in the greed of this necklace matilda learned a very valuable lesson of life it was due to this borrowed necklace that they had to spend 10 years in a heavy debt of 36000 francs and faced a hard life to repay it and at the end we come to know that same necklace was an artificial one which was not more than 500 francs thus i feel that the title of the story is very aptly suggested which is the necklace the very first thing that this lesson teaches us is that everyone should be content with whatever life has to offer one should live within one's means or else he invites unnecessary problems anxieties and confusion in life the most important message of the story is that we should be what we are sometimes we just want to be like someone else just to impress people but we are not of that type we all need to learn the fact that we should try to be our best version and unique in our own way that's all in today's session the summary and question answers related to this chapter will be flashed in front of you just in a moment if you like to grow with me subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon not to miss the notifications of my new uploads i'll see you again in my next video till then take good care of yourself bye and thank you